Good morning. It is Wednesday, September 21st, and we will be soon engaging in council time, but prior to that, a very important work session. It is the annual presentation of financial reports by the auditor's office. So let's begin with that, and uh, then we'll have questions from council following. Please go ahead. Thank you, Chair Barrowman. Um, I'm Mark Gasway, the County Finance Director, and today I have uh, with me Mitchell Kelly, who is our Reporting and Analysis Manager. And on behalf of the audit, uh, we are uh, grateful for this opportunity to meet with, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> to meet with Council this morning to formally present these uh, financial reports. Um, most of these reports have been um, available for some time. Um, I just uh, want to um let council know that uh we do enjoy the opportunity to have a, a formal discussion about these reports each year we've had a very busy summer so this is a little bit later than normal typically typically we'll um re report out in in july or august but uh i think we've had lots of uh, conversations around uh other topics this year um and particularly the arpa discussion so uh, we're a little bit later than normal. Um, so if you could forward to the next slide. Today, we're gonna talk about our four main uh, financial reports that are prepared by the auditor's office. Uh, and I just wanna point out that these reports are uh, prepared and addressed to council and to the citizens of Clark County. Uh, if you read the opening uh, sections of each of these reports, you'll see that all of these reports are meant to be uh, directed to council. Uh, we we report for the county, uh, although we're reporting through the auditor's office, we're reporting on behalf of the whole county. Uh, and the um, the reports are directed to the citizens of the of the county as well. Our we'll spend a little bit of time talking about our annual comprehensive financial report. Um, Mitchell will talk a little bit about our popular annual financial report. Then we'll spend a little time on the financial trends monitoring report. And then just briefly, our impact fee report. So if you could go to the next slide, please. I just want to point out our annual comprehensive financial report is, is quite extensive. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. I do want to point out that, oh, I also wanted to to note, I hope all of the counselors by now have received hard copies of these reports. If you haven't, please let us know. Uh, we have done a lot of things electronically. All of the reports are posted out uh, on the website for those in, in the audience that may not have a copy, but they're available. And we would love to make them available in either format, uh, whichever is preferable. So I uh, just want to point out a couple of sections in the uh, annual comprehensive financial report. We're not going to go into it in depth. It's it's quite extensive, over well over 200 pages. Uh, we uh, have our first section. It's our letter of transmittal, which is addressed to council and to the citizens of Clark County, and it does summarize um, some of the content of the chapter of the of the um, report. Uh, I I would certainly recommend if you don't want to go through all 200 pages. Uh, certainly recommend reading the letter of transmittal. It's it's a almost uh, executive summary type of a of a section. Then, within that letter of transmittal, you will note that the 2021 uh, annual financial report has already been awarded the certificate achievement from the Government Finance Officers Association. This is the county's 35th consecutive year receiving this award. It's, I think back 35 years, and I don't know what you were doing, but I doubt if I was thinking a whole lot about governmental accounting at the time. So uh, <laughs> within the, the next section is management discussion and analysis. It's, it's a more of a narrative type version with um, um, some, some graphs and charts in there. It talks about the financial statements. And then because of the size and extent of the reporting in the county, uh, we have pages 33 through 216 with financial statements. That sounds like a lot. It is. 
it is that we have a lot of different funds in in the county that we have to account for we account for our funds on a countywide basis and also individual basis and um, it's very very um, comprehensive then in the end of the report there's a few pages on a statistical section uh, this statistical section is somewhat like our our trends report it go that covers 10 year period uh, we don't do a lot of commentary in this statistical section like we do in the trends report uh, but it it's there there's some very um, timely information in there some some very interesting information as well so uh, if are there any questions on this particular report we're going to go through these just briefly one at a time if if you have a question on any of this, we can wait till the end or, or you can jump right in, so. Okay, let's go to the next slide and I'll turn some time over to Mitchell. Thanks, Mark. Um, so the second report we'll be talking about is called the Popular Annual Financial Report. This is another report that the Government Finance Officers Association has recommended that governments prepare. Um, and as a report that we, this is our second year reporting uh, this report. If you could go to the next slide. <clears throat> the popular annual financial report or PAFR is designed to be readily accessible and easily understandable for the citizens of Clark County and presents the information that is um, from our ACFR, our annual comprehensive financial report, in a more um, accessible format. As I said, this is the second year preparing the report, and last year, uh, the 2020 Clark County PAFR, we received an award for outstanding achievement um, in reporting. So uh, we also submit, submitted this report again this year, uh, our 2021 report. Um, the report details high level uh, the information of the county, uh, details trend, a, a three-year trend of our income statement and then also our balance sheet. Um, and then if you could uh, go to the next slide. <clears throat> the report details a few key parts. One of them goes into the general fund and details the unassigned or available general fund balance. As you can see, um, in 2021, we had a significant increase primarily due to uh, the increase in uh, sales tax received and, and uh, our cost savings of, of other cost saving measures that we had prepared to do as a result of the uncertainty related to uh, the pandemic. But in addition, we have another page that details the American Rescue Plan uh, transactions as of the end of the year of 2021. So this is another page that is accessible and um, reviewable by the, the citizens. It's on our website right now and um, helps the information, the, the critical information that the county is working on to be accessible to, to everyone. Great, thanks Mitchell. Um, I just wanna point out, we really like the popular annual financial report. It's, it's much uh, easier to read the um, the, there, there's better understandable graphics in it. It, it kind of, it's very high, it, it takes some of the, the high level information from the annual financial report and, and helps explain it a little bit better. There's, there's more pictures and graphs and things. Uh, we hope that the citizens uh, are able to, I guess, enjoy this report a little bit more than reading through, you know, 230 pages of of graphs and and things from our annual financial report so uh, next slide please <clears throat> so i just briefly want to talk about our financial trends monitoring report uh, in the financial trends monitoring report it opens up with an executive summary we have 29 financial indicators that we we measure uh, this year 16 of those were positive and the majority of the rest were neutral. I believe we didn't have any go into the uh, kind of the warning category, or I don't believe we have any in the warning category at this point. Uh, point out that it also contains 
County Council's fiscal policies that were adopted in 1982. There are 17 policies. We've had uh, discussions about these previously. Uh, these policies were put in place to help um, the, the county finance uh, staff um, account for uh, financial transactions and also helps us guide in areas of budgeting and debt um, and um, the finance areas of the county. I want to point out also that in the this uh, particular version of the trends report, we have put in a line which we call normalized data. We have actual and normalized data. There have been some impact from the federal uh, funding that we've received, and we've tried to show what we we have shown what that impact is, but also if we exclude that, where our trends would have been. So that is what we mean by normalized data. Um, so if we could go to the next slide, please. We have a few examples of some of the trends. Just, I think I, I selected just four. So here's an example of general fund revenue per capita, and this is adjusted for inflation. You can see the actual line is the solid line, and then the normalized, line would be the the dotted line so you can see that we had uh, in 2020 a significant increase in the general fund due to the this was the crf program at the time we did not have a separate fund for that federal funding it all ran through the general fund so in order to show um, show you the impact of that we've included both what the trend would look like with that funding and and without that funding Next slide, please. Uh, here's the general fund expenditures per capita, and again, uh, adjusted for inflation. It, it shows a small bump due to the federal funding that was expended through the general fund. Uh, had we not had that funding, you would we would have fallen where the dotted line is. So you can see that we were um, still trending downward in our expenditures per capita. Uh, that looks like uh, from 2021, where we've been just about flat, which is, I think, what we would have expected. So, next slide, please. Here's a, a very interesting um, measure actual FTEs per capita. Uh, as you know, the county's growing. We're over uh, half a million residents at this point. Our FTEs within the county have held fairly fairly consistent um, and this this is a this measure includes actual FTEs rather than budgeted FTEs so there's another component here where we know that we've had uh, difficulty um, filling all of our positions so we're we continue this this downward trend of the number of available staff we have to serve the population in the county hmm. Okay, next slide, please. I have one more here, I think. Yeah, this is this is something that uh, I think everyone here is, has expected. This is our um, taxable sales of goods and services in the county. You can see that upward trend. And then if you look right at the, the tail end, the last two years, you can see kind of a, a, a jump where we've had some uh, very strong um, retail sales uh, over the last two years that have uh, helped our sales tax collection in our in our general fund. So these are just examples. These are just <clears throat> excuse me four examples of the trends that we have in there. Again, there's 29. There it's it's fairly comprehensive. We cover areas of revenue, expense, our debt. Um, I, I didn't include a slide on our debt capacity, but over the last uh, 10 years, our our debt service requirements has um, has been reduced to about half. Uh, it's it's a very uh, interesting trend. We uh, have a very strong economic indicators in our economic section as well. So I, I'd encourage you to take a look at those. If you have any questions on any particular um, graph or measure, uh, we are always available to, to help you work through those. So the next slide, please. Okay, I'm gonna turn the time back to Mitchell for a second. Thanks, Mark. So the final report we want to discuss briefly is the impact fee report. The impact fee report 
reviews the revenues and the expenses of all of the impact fee districts and um, the impact fees that have been collected for traffic impact fee and also park impact fee. Um, we are in right now the report is in draft status as we're trying to um, reconcile with public works some of the um, some of these impact fees um, the impact impact fee activity we have uh, potentially a, a couple of districts park districts that are in what is called concurrency meaning when we collect a impact fee we have a certain time period that we're we're required to spend that money if we don't spend that money, then it comes into what is called concurrency. Um, and there are a few departments or a few uh, districts that are in concurrency right now uh, based on our evaluation. And so we're trying to confirm that with Public Works to make sure that once we produce the report, um, we have rec fully reconciled and are uh, um, confident in the, in the numbers that are, we are being, that are being reported. So that is uh, the final report that is in draft status. And um, we, we anticipate that being resolved with Public Works um, fairly soon, and, and then we'll, we'll issue a final report. Great, thanks, Mitchell. <clears throat> All of the reports that we've um, talked about today, it, with the exception of the impact fee report, because it's still in draft form, can be found out on the Clark County website. The, it's on the uh, auditor page under financial reports. And, and I just want to make a couple comments. Um, you know, I heard a comment last night at the public hearing about the, the lack of uh, transparency in our financial numbers or our financial reporting. And, and I want to let council know and, and the citizens that may be listening, uh, Clark County is fully disclosing everything that we have um, reported. There's nothing that we, we hold back. We um, go above and beyond the minimum requirements of any financial reporting um, requirements. So I, I just want to assure council that uh, the numbers are there, whether it's revenues, expenses, uh, fund balances, we report everything. And uh, I think this is very timely. Uh, yesterday, um, Chair Bowerman and I believe Councilor Rylander were able to attend our exit conference with our state auditors. And our state auditors have uh, issued a clean opinion on uh, all of our financial statements. We are, um, I believe, one of the leading counties in the state of Washington in how we approach our reporting and uh, the ability that we have to produce these reports. We don't, you know, we're on the leading edge of uh, the requirements for disclosure. And uh, if anyone, listening is uh, you know concerned about how or what we're we're reporting financially from the county they are welcome to contact me or uh, the auditor's office and we will make sure that they get the information that they are looking for so with that council i will turn it back to you for questions uh, we've just just gone through these briefly i have uh, uh, the reports for a few weeks um, to to review and if you have any questions about anything in particular, we can take those questions now, or you're welcome to, to call me or contact myself or Mitchell, or, or for a matter of fact, uh, anyone on our financial services staff. So, um, so Mark, Chair, I'll, just I'll a turn comment. It yeah. uh, just um, the comments that we hear sometimes from the public about the lack of transparency are really way off. I am so, so pleased with the manner in which your department makes things open, makes them accessible, has them online, is willing to explain them and so on. So sometimes I think, where in the world do these comments come from? And I think that in part, the following is the story. I think that people may look at the 200 and some odd pages of materials and be a bit overwhelmed and not have a clue how to tackle it. Maybe even with regard to the general fund, which is a smaller part of the overall financials. How in the world do they know how much a particular department received? 
it is a very complicated process. I think that is in part the issue. It is not one of transparency. It is one of the reader being able to understand and grasp what is being presented, in my opinion. And therefore, I really note your willingness as a department and a committee and so on to help the public and, and others who are in a position of need to know um, what this is all about, how to read it. And from what I understand your willingness, and I've experienced it personally because I've called you and said, Mark, how do I read this on page whatever? And you've been wonderful in explaining it in depth to me. And others can do that too. And I think that is what helps the public to get around this notion that we're not transparent because the county is. That's thank, my thank humble you. opinion. <laughs> thank you, Tara. We appreciate that. And, and we are, you know, we're, we're doing everything that we feel we can to um, make information available and be accessible as well. So, and if anyone, if anyone needs additional help, uh, you know, we've, we've put a, a new report in place. The, the, the PAFR report is meant to be directed to citizens that may or may not understand, you know, the finance and accounting issues. So we're trying to improve. Um, one question that I might ask council, you know, in the past, we've had a little a um, bit more timely updates. We've done quarterly updates throughout the year. Uh, at, at one point, we went away from that due to, um, you know, some of the counselors' um, preferences. But if that's something that the council would like to do, uh, return to those quarterly updates, maybe they'd be a little bit more timely throughout the year. Um, we can certainly do that. Uh, at the at a minimum, we've begun producing. Uh, I, I would say monthly financial reports. They're just a brief one page report that is uh, circulated throughout the finance team and it's made available to to council through um, you know your access to the to the workday system. Uh, we have more than just the four reports that we're presenting today available if if you would like to to go that direction. So what do you think, Council? I have, can I, can I share some comments and thoughts? Yes, please do, Councilor Rylander. Excuse me, I had to clear my throat. So, uh, first off, I happen to think that one of the most important roles that a county council member can play is oversight of the financials. The It's all about the money in the end. And so, for me, uh, I would think a, a quarterly summary high level, I'm not talking hours, I'm talking, you know, 15 to 30 minute highlight overview on a quarterly basis would have distinct value. That's on that. Can I make some comments on the uh, reporting information they've just shared in particular, the trend report? Of course, and let's get a sense of agreement with your first comment. Do other counselors concur with that? I certainly do. Madam Chair. Yes, Councillor. Yeah, I, I would concur. I think, uh, Mark, you know, I was a big supporter of quarterly financial reports. I think it's good for us to see them, mm -hmm. the future council to see them on a regular basis. And it also adds that extra transparency for the public um, that we're talking about them every quarter and we're seeing the trends as they're you know, developing over time. So that's the majority of us. Please go for that in the future. Uh, Councillor Mylander, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to say, we will schedule a update for the 3rd quarter, which is now ending at the end of this month. Uh, probably by the end of October, if w maybe a month following the end of the quarter is what we'll shoot for. Very good. Councilor Ryland. And, and it, not to get away from Councilor Ryland, just important comments, but just to answer your question. You know, I don't need um, a quarterly briefing. I do support a posted quarterly report in a prominent location. <clears throat> We've had these transparency discussions before, and these are important reports, and we keep getting from at least a very small portion of the segment 
kind of spurious allegations. And we heard them just last night, you know, about uh, privatization and commercialization and where's the the interest in, in looking at uh, shifting management of the jail. You know, having these reports available prominently, making it easy for the public to find them uh, is always a good thing. Even um, the consent agenda, when we have all the warrants, you know, there's millions of dollars of bills we're paying there, and there was a comment about that. How come we don't know anything about that? Well, the answer is because you didn't look in the right place. It is available online. We, we had explored making that uh, detail of warrants available uh, on the consent agenda or as a separate issue. And it would have been volumes of data, volumes of financial data, because it represented hundreds of uh, contract claims, payments. So it is very complicated, as you said, and it's the classic, uh, some of the public just doesn't know what they don't know. Um, but, you know, we need to be as transparent as we can and have a single place that's one click away from the public uh, looking at our web page and saying, okay, we need to look at the quarterly report. Where is it? And there it is uh, to view. So uh, thanks. I just wanted to kind of double tap on what everyone said. And I know Dick's got some really important comments. We, we appreciate, uh, Councillor, what you just said. However, three of us were interested in having that report orally, so that's uh, the way it will be, and that uh, 30 to minutes or 15 minutes, um, I'm sure will be beneficial for us all. So I just wanted to make sure we understood, that Mark understood that we do wish to go forward with that. So, um, Councillor Rylander, it is in your court. <laughs> Thank you very much, and appreciate the comments from Councillor. Um, there is a lot of rhetoric, particularly in the last four, three or four or five months about the bloated government, the bloated county bureaucracy, the inefficiencies, too many employees, overpaid, et cetera. And, and those could all be accurate, but when we look at the facts and when we look at the data, I would strongly encourage people to look at the trend report because rather than just taking a snapshot of one year or even two years, looking over a period of time, and this trend report is about nine years, roughly, worth of data. And without going into all of the excruciating detail, because even this short report is about 29, 30 pages, uh, there are so many indicators, in my opinion, that show that county government has actually been significantly more efficient and effective than the public might generally perceive. If you look at just some of the data, you'll note that the expenditures per capita in that nine-year period are down 14%. The adjusted inflation general fund expenditures are down 8%. The employees per capita has shrunk from 3.51 per thousand to 3.08 per thousand. If you go through the operating position, you look at the debt has actually decreased, you look at the economic growth, you look at the base, the size of the population, you look at the taxable goods and services. When you look at all of this data in total and, and really, really analyze it, it comes across strongly to me that the citizenry of Clark County should be extremely pleased at how efficient and how effective the county government has been over that period of time. And I don't say this lightly because I'm a, I'm a pretty strong critic and I'm a big believer in as small a government as possible, and yet this data suggests to me that we are seeing a smaller government, not a larger government. So rather than just rhetoric and throwing numbers out and making statements and claims, I would really, really request that the public take the time to actually look at the facts and look at the data and make their own decisions on what they think is happening. And I believe that they will in total come out the other end with the opinion that we should be appreciative of the hard work and effort that the county and the employees have put in and the direction things are going. Now I'll get off my soapbox. Thank you. 
Thank you. <gasps> Other comments from council? Madam Chair. Yes, Councillor Olson. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and Councillor Islander, thank you. Um, you've been singing off my song sheet. Um, I've been saying this for six and a half years and, uh, and it does matter and it does take the time to, to really dig in and look at the numbers and, and you're absolutely right. Um, the citizens of Clark County get a very good deal for the taxes they pay in this community and, and, uh, and the employees um, at Clark County are doing their very, very best to deliver those services every day. Um, so. I appreciate you uh, making those comments and absolutely agree with you. Uh, just to segue very briefly and give credit where credit is due, I think um, Councilor Rylander was just published in the reflector uh, with that summary. It's a good summary of this, of the highlights of this report. And like Council Olson, I, one of my first jobs, I thought, uh, entering the county was, okay, how many employees do we have? Uh, how many do we really need? And, you know, looking at that aspect of the allegation of a uh, uh, bloated government, because it goes back a lot farther than three or five months. But I, I will tell you, just from my own research and diligence um, and working with two county managers, I came to the same conclusion that Councilor Olson did. We are running a tight ship. We have tightened the belt. We have so few employees for the amount of work and the enormous work that those employees do. It's really quite incredible how tight our belt is. So, Councillor Rylander, thank you for being on your soapbox, as you said, and that there was plenty of room on that box for the rest of us to pop up here, too, because we all apparently agree. Are there different comments from council? Anything that you wish to add, Mark? Uh, no, counselor, um, counselors, I really appreciate your attentiveness to the financial um, reports. Again, we are available anytime, any, you know, if you have any questions about them, uh, we will uh, look towards uh, preparing a, a quarterly update for you. And uh, as usual, we are, you know, here to serve you and the citizens of Clark County. And on behalf of our, our auditor, Greg Kimsey, I again appreciate the opportunity we've had to present these to you. So. Great. Thank you so much. And I'll look forward on a regular basis to that quarterly report. I think that's a great idea. Okay, let's uh, move on into council time and close out the work session.